Hi guys. Um, hope you're having a great week. I know I am. I was a little under the weather at the beginning of the week, but I'm on the bed now. Things are good. Um, it's been a little cold here where I am. I don't know about where you guys are, but it's been a little brutal. We've had our first snowstorm uh, this week, and it's been a little brutal outside. So if you're like me where there's snow, bundle up, be safe. Uh, when you're walking, it can be a bit slippery or driving or, and take care of your car or wheelchair type tires. Um, today, my sermon title is called His Declaration of Love. Uh, let us pray. Father, I thank you for our time together. I thank you for what you're going to do and the lives you're going to save through this sermon. Oh God, I pray that people will receive your love, receive your grace, receive your forgiveness. And um, through this sermon, I pray that they will learn about the strength of those things, that those things are not weak, that they're strong. And Lord, I pray that you will speak to me and speak through me and speak mightily, save wives through this sermon. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, today the sermon is called His Declaration of Love. When I think about the love of God, it is just so much to unpack. And at the end of this sermon, I will read the mo one of the most famous scriptures about the love of God. No, not uh, 1 Corinthians 13 uh, that, that talk about love in general, but the, one of the most famous scriptures about the love of God to me, to me uh, and to some Bible scholars is Romans 8.28. Uh, not Romans 8.28 alone, but the whole Romans 8 chap chapter, it's just an amazing chapter to read. It's preached from a lot. Um, when I think about the love of God and the depth and the breadth of it, it is so amazing because to think that when I think about the story of uh, creation and, and Jesus and how how um, God created this wonderful world and then we we destroyed it by our disobedience and then through time he, he tried and tried to get it back to where it was meant to be, which is peace and harmony with him. Um, but he had to send Jesus to get that done. And when I think of the cross, I think of the most um, greatest act of love in history. Just um, because dying on a cross at that time was very common. In Jesus' day, in the time where he lived, when you got sentenced to death, you didn't get sentenced to the electric chair. You got sentenced to um, a brutal death on a cross or sometimes through hanging, depending on what you did. But what when I think of the love of God, when I say it's the greatest act of love in history, could you imagine, uh, imagine this, like you, did, you didn't do anything. You were the greatest person ever. You had no sin, you helped people, you healed people, and you still, died in the most heinous way possible 
because you didn't want people to struggle. And in, um, I'm going to put the cross in kind of a modern day context. Um, I was watching this music video, um, it's Night Visions by AJ McLean, um, from the, from the Backstreet Boys, his solo project, um, one of the singles was called Night Visions and that video, not the song per se, but the video is amazing. What the video is about is basically he, he, his wife, um, in the video, um, first of all, in the video, let me back up, you see him in a jail cell and you think that okay he's in jail he did something wrong but through the video you understand what happened um what happened was some somebody came in and attacked his wife um at a car one in a car one night or by her car one night and she grabbed the perpetrator's gun and shot him. And so, but her husband came and, and he made it look like he shot the perpetrator so his wife could go free. And that is kind of what, God, what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus, Jesus took everything we would do wrong and and took it on himself and died for all that sin, all that degradation, all of that and just and just gave us redemption. And when I think of the, the love of God, it's so it's beyond amazing. It's beyond even thinking about. And I I can't even begin to describe it. When I think of the love of God, I, I start to cry because when I think of myself and the kind of person that I am and all my flaws and all my mistakes and the mistakes that I haven't even made yet, it's just amazing because... Um, he already died for all of that and it's just so amazing and and he just wants me to tell you today something simple he loves you he loves you and that love that he has for you is strong it's not it's not this weak kind of love we we say oh it's okay and oh we can do whatever we want. We have the grace of God. We, he loves us. No, it's not that kind of love at all. Real love comes with two sides. I think real love comes with kindness, comes with compassion, comes with all that w wonderful stuff, comes with grace, comes with anointing comes with all that wonderful stuff but real love also comes with um also comes with stuff that is not so pleasant but it's necessary it it comes with conviction it comes with hard times it comes with disciplining it comes with all of that and Love without one side of that coin is an imbalanced love. Imbalanced love. And I think sometimes I'm not a parent, and I can't speak to this, but I am an auntie and I am a citizen. I think that when you love someone, you have all of, all of that. You have both of those sides. You have 
Um, the side that is warm and mushy and compassionate and caring and lo and loving. And then you have the side that's the more disciplining side, the more um, not punishing. Love is not punishing. It's disciplining. It's it's um, con convicting. It's let let you um, live out your consequences. I always say that I that I believe the wrath of God is basically just living out the consequences of your mistakes. Some most times he will not let you. He will he will love you through your mistakes but still let you live out the consequences. Love is not the absence of consequences. Love is being there with you in the consequences. So if you made, if you made detrimental mistakes that are, that are causing you to question whether God's there or whether he still loves you, yes, he still loves you. But he will let you live out the consequences of your actions and be with you in it. Because sometimes we, we have the mistaken idea that love is just this warm, fuzzy thing. But love is not. Love is strong. Love is capable. Love is, is just, it's restorative. When a person really loves another person, it can restore them. It can heal them. It can really um, make their lives um, different in a fulfilling way. Because sometimes when people say they love people and let them do whatever they want, that's not love. That's just letting people run amok. That's, that's not love. That's a mess. Sometimes real love causes for some hardcore consequences. And sometimes, um, sometimes with those hardcore consequences, um, they don't feel good at the time, but they are necessary. So sometimes God will take us through some necessary ups and downs because he can see what's going on and he can see what we need and he can see who we are. And we don't see all that stuff. We don't see all the ins and outs. We're very myopic as human beings. We only see uh, through glass dimly, but at the end, we see it all. Sometimes we don't get how God loves us um, because he's letting us go through all this stuff. But all this stuff is to make us better people, stronger people. There is nothing to bring out who you really are like a trial or trouble. The, the strength of a person, I think, only can really come when they find out who they are. And how they find out who they are is most of the time through trouble, through hard circumstances, through pain. You, you get to develop muscle. You get to develop things that are just amaz amazing, that you don't even know what was in you. When your back's against the wall and it's just, and nobody's around and everybody has left you and you know you blew it and you know that God is saying, come on girl, come on boy, you can do this. You can do this, I'm with you. No need to fear. And like that's what he's teaching. Some, some of us is like, 
you don't need all these people. I'm I'm a big proponent of community. I'm a big proponent of having prayer partners, having sisters and brothers to come around you and pray for you and to help you through. But so, in some seasons of your life, it just needs to be you and God. And you're wondering, where did everybody go? Where did everybody go? Why do I feel so alone? Why am I crying every night? Why am I single at over 30? Why am I single at over 40? Why, are, why is everybody around me getting married, having children, um, and doing all that stuff? It's because he has another plan for you that you don't even know of. And this time of loneliness and this time of not knowing what to do is developing muscle for you. It's God is working you out and he's got you on the spiritual treadmill for a reason. He's got you in this pat pattern for a reason. You've been praying for things to stop, but the Lord says today what you should be praying is two things. Lord, what are the tools that I'm supposed to develop in this, in this trial? And two, what are you teaching me in this trouble that I need in my later life? See, the Lord knows where he's taking you. And what he's teaching you is what you'll need to know, not now, but in your later life. He knows the heights, the depths, and the breadth that he's bringing you to. Um, and he knows what experiences you need to deal with that side of your life. You may, you may think that it's pain, you may think that it's trouble, but it's not. It's really development. It's really development. It's really development. So receive the development. And I'm not saying count it all joy for all things. Oh, my sister died, but it's joy. It's not joy. It's pain. It's hardship. But it's for a purpose. And I know you heard this um, a lot, but trust me, beloved, it's for a purpose. And it may not be for now, but right now, he's developing tools in you that you'll need for later. And I think when you understand that he's developing tools in you, this these troubles are working out in you, not only your salvation, but they're um, developing muscle in you. And I think the thing with this generation is we give up too easily when things don't work the first time we give up. When a relationship doesn't work after a month, we give up. When a, when a, when a, tr when a pastor says something to offend us, we go and find another church. There's no sticking power anymore. And in this, the Lord is saying, have sticking power, because I'm teaching you things that you'll have to know uh, for your later life. And I think when you understand that this is not only um, trouble for a season or trouble for a reason, but it's trouble for other people as well. What you're going through now may not be for you. It may be for the people that you're meant to minister to. Um, to, to say, yeah, yeah, sister, yeah, brother, I went through that too, and here's how it was for me. Here's how God brought me through. Here's how, what I learned going through that process. And I think the greatest gift sometimes, sometimes is the depth, is the depth of you 
is the depth of your needs, is the depth, depth of your wants, and you can reach out to somebody else. Sometimes trouble, most times trouble, will take you to the end of yourself and you'll develop a dependence on God that you would never have had before. Because when things are going well, you're like, well, I got this. I got this. I'm okay. But when you understand that there's nothing you can do, you, you start leaning on those everlasting arms. And he, he's teaching you in this time of pressing and crushing to depend on him. He's developing you muscles. He's developing you in you strategy that you will need for your later life. And you know, sometimes you don't know what you need before you know what you need. And sometimes, sometimes you don't know what you need before you know what you need. And sometimes by knowing what you need, you you have to go through that trouble. Like, um, when I got diagnosed with diabetes last year, I didn't know anything about, I knew somewhat about eating, eating, um, healthy and whatever, but I didn't follow it. But when the doctor said, Rachel, you have diabetes, I started researching diabetes, I started talking to people about diabetes, and I developed tools that, that caused me to drop 30 pounds in a bit over a year. And so now those tools, now that I'm aware how diabetes works and how sugar how sugars works. Now I know what I need. Before I didn't know what I need. I didn't know that I needed to know about sugars um, and, and other things for my health and eating and whatever. So that pain, as hard as it was, that type 2 diabetes, it wasn't the devil. It, and now I can look back at it and say it was, it was the Lord why I was afflicted because I was killing myself slowly and didn't know it. Um, when you understand that pain and pressure is not to kill you, it's to make you stronger and develop you, that's when you come out as pure gold. And when, like, I think of, like, I've never done the gym or weight training. I do a bit of weight training, but when, but not enough, but not much. But I've seen weight training on TV, and I know that resistance develops muscle. Resistance develops muscle resistance develops muscle and and a lot of things may seem to be resisting you you try this door it doesn't work you try this project it doesn't work you try this it doesn't work you try that it doesn't work and you're saying god well you told me this and he's saying mm, that resistance is developing muscle. That resistance, those doors closing, is developing muscle, spiritual muscle that you need for your, your next leg of the journey. So don't be perturbed or don't be upset and don't be angry about the doors closing or about the resistance that you're seeing. And it's so funny that the more resistance you see, you're receiving is the more vision you're having. So a door closing means you might have a dream the night before of 
preaching and ministering to people and you're like, Lord, how is this going to happen? Or you might have visions of starting that business or starting that music company or whatever you're doing. And he's saying that resistance is building muscle and I'm showing you bits and pieces and snapshots of what I want from you because I don't want you to give up. He's saying do not give up. The resistance is building muscle. And when I'm ready, you'll just come out and people will say, what the heck? I didn't know you had that in you. And you can, you can smirk inside and go like, I knew I had that in me because God showed me. So don't be perturbed or don't be misled by the resistance. The resistance is building muscle in you that, that you'll need for your next leg of the journey. And my last thing is have hope. Have hope. Have hope that the vision will come to pass. Have hope that the vision will come to pass. Have hope that the vision will come to pass. Because what he's showing you is not for naught. It's not just because he wants to disturb your sleep or whatever. He wants to show you what you have to give to the world. Beloved, you have so much to give to the world. Regardless of your past, regardless of what, you, what you've done, he's going to use all that to make something beautiful. I was watching uh, Kirk Franklin a video by Kirk Franklin the other day and uh, he was talking about the ingredients to make cake. A lot of ingredients don't taste good on their own but um, together they make something beautiful. All the good and bad things in your life um, are coming together to make something beautiful and you just need you just need to stick it out you just need to know that this is for a greater purpose and to end this sermon the Lord wants me to read Romans 8 to you so let me just get situated and I'm going to read it to you so Um, I'm going to read Romans 8, 20, 18, but just let me get to my computer. So I hope you guys are doing well today. I know, I know that I was. I am and it's awesome um, it's awesome to think about the love of God and how he is just so amazing and how he is so ready to restore and deliver and to heal us and it's just so Amazing when you think about it. Miracles when you move. There's such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tune of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out. So right now, I know you're able, and my God will come through again. You can do all things. You can do all things, but I feel 
Cause you never lost a battle, never lost a battle. And I know, I know, you never will. You can do all things. You can do all things but fail. Cause you never lost a battle, never lost a battle. And I know, I know, you never will. You can do all things. You can do all things but fail. Cause you never lost a battle, never lost a battle. And I know, I know. Um, I just want to praise him today for doing some wonderful things. And whatever battles you're facing, you're not alone. And he just wants to say to, to you today that the battle may not be over, but the struggle is. Sometimes in a battle, um, in something we're facing, we we struggle a lot and sometimes we just think that that this will kill us but he's saying today that the struggle is not over that the that the battle is not over but the struggle is and when you go through this battle it will be like you're not going through anything you will go through it with praise. You'll go through it with more anointing. You'll go through it with more forgiveness. Sorry, I'm just trying to turn on my chair to read the scripture, but it's taking a long time, so. Uh. So, this battle is not going to be a struggle. It's going to be a battle, but it's not going to be a struggle. You're not going to have to wrestle with yourself or with others. He will give you a peace. He will give you a peace that will pass all understanding. And you'll just be amazed at how you'll come through. I'm free, praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is rested, it's just a blessing, praise God, hallelujah, I'm free, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is rested, it's just a blessing, praise God, hallelujah, I'm free, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is rested, it's such a blessing, praise God, hallelujah, I'm free, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is rested, it's such a blessing, praise God, hallelujah, I'm free, I'm covered.
said, this, this battle, you're also, not only is the struggle not going to happen, but the, you're going to be covered. Um, you're going to feel the supernatural covering of the Holy Spirit. Not only are you not going to struggle through a battle because you never, because he never lost the battle. Well, you're also going to be supernaturally covered in the name of Jesus. And I just want to say thank you for what, for what the Lord has done, for what he's planning to do in your lives and in your homes, in your families, at your workplace. Look for supernatural provision this week. Supernatural provision, supernatural wealth transfer, and I'm not just saying this because I'm going to say it. I'm saying it because the Holy Spirit is just so in this room. I don't know if you can feel it by your computers, but the Holy Spirit is just so in this room. He's speaking, Lord Jesus. And there is somebody, there is somebody there. You've been struggling at your job. Um, it's an off, there are two people. It's an office job or, and a construction worker job. And you've been, these two people, uh, you've been struggling struggling, you've been struggling with your boss, struggling with your kids, struggling to make ends meet. And the Lord is saying, you are, this battle that you're going through is not for you, and you're not strugg, and you won't struggle anymore to do with this, because uh, the battle won't go away, but the struggle will, the the hardness will, the the toil will, the toil will subside, and you'll go through this battle with a supernatural peace, and you'll also go through it with supernatural Holy Spirit covering. That is for somebody out there. I don't know if you're if you're going to be watching this in the next few weeks. I don't know if you're going to be watching it in the next few years. You may, you may not, or you may not be watching it for the next six years, but at the time you're watching, watching it, you will be going through a supernatural struggle. Um, you'll be going through a battle, and then up into this point, you'll be struggling, 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 and then it'll be like a supernatural calm. A supernatural peace and supernatural covering and then after this doors will begin to open your boss will just come to you and say uh, apologize to your co-workers that have been on your back um, not taking up their share of the work and you're toiling they'll they'll begin to take responsibility and doors will open for you. You're thinking of quitting this job, but don't. Don't quit. Keep on fighting the good fight. You're there for a reason. God put you in that company for a reason. And it may look like it's a dead end job, but it's, it's a dead end to, to his end. So it may look like a dead end job, but it's to his end. And the King James Version of the Bible says an expected end. So he comes to give you the end that you're expecting. So that dead end job that you think is a dead end is not a dead end. It's his end. And his end is the end that he expects for you. So keep doing what you've been doing. Keep treating people the way you're treating people. Keep loving people the way you're loving people. 
and he will just exalt you in a way that you could not never imagine so because God exalts the faithful because God sees all you've been doing people may not see but God sees the hours you stay late God sees the time that you prepare the time that you encourage others the time that you do things for, for the body of Christ in secret and he will reward you in public and his reward is not only going to be in heaven, it's going to be in front of people who, who underestimated you. So brother, sister, keep the faith. Keep going. Don't give up. Go to work. Do all what you what he's purposing you to do. Keep treating people with respect. They may, they may mistake your weakness your meekness for weakness but it's not and at the end of it people will see your good works if you just keep on what you've been doing he sees you he knows the toil he knows the stress and he knows the strain and he loves you for it he knows the nights you've been you've been crying. He knows the nights you've been lonely. He's he knows the nights that you've stayed you've stayed late at work and nobody's appreciated you. He knows the nights that you've picked up other people's slack and he will reward you. Don't quit beloved. You're too close to quit. That's what he's saying right now. He's saying you are too close to quit. He's saying you're too close to quit. Uh, one last song. Um, well, before I leave. There will be mountains. I will have to climb and there will be battles that I will have to fight a victory or defeat it's up to me to decide when my back is against the wall if I never try I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy and I don't believe. He brought me this far to lead me. I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me. The road would be easy and I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I just can't give up now. I've come to Um, I almost forgot I 
I said my computer would read Romans twenty Romans eight. I'm going to do that now, and then once I do that, I'm going to sign off. So here's Romans 8, and my computer is going to read this. And this is his declaration of love to you today. Oh, I went in so many places that I didn't want to go, but the Lord... Uh, wanted to go to those places, so I have to follow his will. This video is so long. I'm sorry about that. But the Lord had a lot of things that he wanted to cover today. Um, let me just... This is Romans 8. This is his declaration of love to you today. Read document. Okay, you know what, guys? I'm going to just um save the reading of this for next week because it doesn't seem to be be working and this video seems to be an hour so i'll talk to you later see you next week bye
just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy, and I don't believe he's brought me this far. I don't believe he brought me this far. Never believe he's brought you this far. Never believe he's brought you this far. Please don't believe he's brought you this far to leave you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll always be with you. Keep the faith until I see you next week. Bye. Sorry for such a long video. The Lord will do what he will do. Take care.